Hello, and welcome to today's lesson on reading notes on the um, on the travel staff. So let me get my screen shared. And we'll get started. We'll do a Mesa Verde song first, and then we'll go back to California Avenue, and then we'll go straight into our lesson. Gonna talk about a place that's a special part of our lives. That's Mesa, a special place to learn to read and play and write. Mesa Verde, where the ABCs for me are not a chore but set me free. Where we can go to be the best that we can be. Oh, Mesa, talk about me. There's a place in River Bank where kids all smile. That's Mesa, and teachers never mind us staying a while. Mesa Verde is a blue sky way up high, and the river that runs by, and the fog just comes in. Here's a California Avenue song. that down and we will move on to our objective which is that we will read note names on the treble staff so let's point to our objective and let's read it together ready go we will read note names on the treble staff so as we went over previously the musical alphabet has seven letters in it uh, it repeats uh, as many times as we need to. Uh, a student pointed out recently that the musical alphabet is a lot like a clock because it doesn't have a beginning or an ending time. Um, and, uh, and the musical alphabet is a lot like that, except that unlike a clock, you can go both directions in the musical alphabet. So you can go forward in it or you can go backwards if you're going down. We have the staff, which is made up of five horizontal lines, and we write our music on it. One, two, three, four, five lines. 
Uh, the pitch of the note, which is how high or low the note is, is indicated by its location on the staff. So the higher it is on the staff, the higher the pitch of the note, and the lower it is on the staff, the lower the pitch of the note. Then we have the treble clef here. Everybody say treble clef. Treble clef. And one more time, treble clef. That treble clef goes on the staff like this, um, and it's job is to tell us how we're going to read the notes after and it actually circles that line right there the second line which is where g is so this is often called the g clef because it used to be shaped a lot more like a g than it is now and uh and it circled the g line on the staff it's primarily used for higher pitched instruments though there are some exceptions uh, some high pitch instruments and medium high pitch instruments who use the treble clef are the flute, the trumpet, saxophone, clarinet, oboe, violin, piccolo, guitar, French horn, ukulele, and glockenspiel. Those are just a few of many examples. Uh, music notes can only be on lines or inside spaces. So here I have five notes that are on the lines. The line is going through the middle of the note. So if we see a note and it doesn't have a line going through the middle of it, it's probably in a space. And the notes are sandwiched in between the lines in this case. Or you might have a note that is below the line but doesn't have a line, line crossing through it. We have our tricks to remember the names of notes on lines and spaces. Like every good boy does fine. Yippee, yippee, yay. Help us remember the names of the notes on the lines, E, G, B, D, F. And we also have uh, tricks to remember the names of notes on the spaces, F, A, C, E, face on the space. So what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, review the song where we sing every good boy does fine, yippee, yippee, yay, and face on the space. So let me get my metronome going. It's where I want to start it from. If it'll play. There we go. One, two, one. Oh, we'll wait one more. One, two, here we go. Every good boy does fine. Yippee, yippee, yay. Every good boy does fine. Yippee, yippee, yay. The notes on the line spell. Every good boy does fine. Yippee, yippee, yay. Second time, here we go. Every good boy does fine. Yippee, yippee, yay. Every good boy does fine. Yippee, yippee, yay. The notes on the line spell. Every good boy does fine. Yippee, yippee, yay. Now face on the space. Let's go. F, A, C, E, face on the space. F, A, C, E, face on the space. The notes on the space spell F, A, C, E, face on the space. And second time, here we go. F, A, C, E, face on the space. F, A, C, E, face on the space. The notes on the space spell F, A, C, E, face on the space. Okay, let me share my screen again. We'll keep on going with this. I'll maybe do that. So we'll keep on going. So now what we're going to do is practice uh, identifying lines and spaces. So, um, so you can do this by yourself uh, while watching this video. See the note, and if it's on a line like this one, then you say line, and if it's on a space, then you say space. And then we'll see how many of them are right. So is this on a line or a space? This one's a line. Oh, hold on. What about this one? Line, line, space, space.
space. Space. Line. Space. Line. Space. 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 Line. Space. Line. Space. Line. Line. Space. Space. Line. Okay, now we're going to name the notes on the spaces. So right now we're just going to be dealing with these four notes, F, A, C, and E. We're going to get used to identifying those notes on the staff. And right now we have uh, the letters on the side here to help us out, but eventually those letters are going to go away and we're going to do the best that we can to identify the notes correctly, even if the letters aren't there to help us out. So what is this one? F, A, C, E, A, E, C, A, C, F, E, F. C, A, F, E, C, E, F, E, A, C, A, F, E, C, A, F. And now we're going to do the same thing with the notes on the line. So our only five uh, answers are E, G, B, D, or F. Here we go. What's this one? E. G, B, D, F, G, F, E, F, B, E, B, D, G. D, E, B, D, G, E, D, B, E, G, D, F, B, F, G. Okay, so we finished that. So our objective for today's lesson was that we would read note names on the treble staff. And uh, I would say that if you were following along, the exercise with me, there's a good chance that you have that. Um, so we're going to move on to some other fun stuff that uh, I had planned for today's lesson. Uh, the first one is this video in the Hall of the Mountain King. Now, if you've watched other others of my videos, you know, I don't play other people's YouTube videos on my channel because uh, for one thing, I think it's kind of rude. Um, because if you watch their video on my channel, I'm getting the view and they're not. I don't really make money from making YouTube videos. I have no dog in that game. Um, but I, uh, there are other people 
who uh, very much depend on their YouTube video success. Um, and I don't want to take away from that. So uh, this is a really cool video uh, uh, featuring uh, music written by Edward Grieg. It's called In the Hall of the Mountain King. Um, it's a, a piece that many have heard and would recognize, but might not necessarily uh, be able to name uh, either the name of the piece or the name of the person who wrote the piece. Um, so uh, I'll include the link for this video in the description of this uh, of this YouTube video, um, and you can go and watch the video yourself. Which, by the way, is going to sound a lot better than if we do it here, because the audio in Microsoft Teams, if your ears work really, really well and you know what sounds good, you know this isn't the greatest sound, even though I'm using a pretty nice microphone. I uh, haven't been able to get sound quite the way I want it. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to show you, um, which I can show you here, because it is my creation and not a video, uh, is this uh, Cranky Poodle. And uh, uh, I wanted to uh, share some fun stuff with you about this video, so or this song. A couple of weeks ago when I introduced the song, I told a story about my mom's dog doing these funny things with, uh, you know, stealing a piece of cake. Um, and a lot of people, a lot of my students asked to see what she looks like. And I didn't have any pictures loaded up where it would be easy for them, me to show them, but I've got them this week. And so I'm gonna show you right now. So this is a little dog, Pebbles. Uh, she's about 10 years old and uh, about 14, 15 pounds, pretty small. Um, really funny personality, loves to play fetch but she's not very good at giving the toy back when she's gotten it uh, so sometimes we have to trick her and sometimes she just walks into another room with it uh, lately she's had an ear infection so she's been wearing the donut of shame which as absurd as i expected it to be it's uh actually still pretty cute so um she makes the donut of shame uh work for her um, so yeah, that's the little dog pebbles that this song is about. And we'll finish up this lesson with, um, with a performance of Cranky Poodle. Here we go. Cranky Poodle took a ride with family on vacation. She sniffed the cake in mommy's purse with great anticipation. Cranky Poodle, don't be mean. Cranky Little Poodle. It's not safe for dogs to eat these cookies, cakes, and strudels. Chewing through the plastic wrap around the sweet confetti. With her stolen treat, she never would surrender. But being oh so very small made her a poor defender. Crazy doodle, don't be mean. Crazy little doodle, it's not safe for dogs to eat these cookies, cakes, and strudels. We are done with our lesson today. Thank you so much for joining me with this pre-recorded lesson. Um, some of you watching may be my students uh, at the schools that I teach at. Um, so thank you for catching up with this. Um, I'm sorry that we weren't able to do the live lesson today. And if you are a random YouTube surfer who happened to find my channel, thank you for being here too. 
I hope that this video was enjoyable. If you made it all to the end, apparently it couldn't have been too terrible unless you skipped to the end. Um, but thank you for being here. Uh, I appreciate uh, all of you guys, whether you are my students at my schools or whether you are just somebody who happened to stumble on this. I appreciate that you're here and I appreciate your quest for knowledge. Um, and I can't wait to um, do our next lesson together. Thank you everybody so much. Have a lovely day.